This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 10, Section 2, Mole Mass and Mole Volume Relationships. Well, after all that soul-searching, I am a mole after all. Hmm, glad you discovered how very special you are in chemistry. And yes, the mole is very special in chemistry. In this section, you're going to describe how to convert the mass of a substance to the number of moles and moles to mass. We talked about that last chapter, or I'm sorry, last section of notes. One, that's why we had to calculate the mass or the formula mass or the molar mass of the substance, because now we're going to use that grams per mole number to get from moles to grams or grams to moles. And then we're going to identify the volume of a quantity of a gas, only gas, at STP. And that's your vocabulary word, right? STP is an abbreviation for standard temperature and pressure. Guess how many jelly beans are in the container and win a prize. You decide to enter the contest and you win. Was it just a lucky guess? Not exactly. You estimated the length and diameter of a jelly bean to find its approximate volume. Then you estimated the dimensions of the container to obtain its volume. You did the arithmetic, aka you did the math, and made your guess. In a similar way, chemists use the relationships between the mole and quantity, such as mass, volume, and number of particles, to solve chemistry problems. Ooh, that should be familiar, right? We talked about the mass of bird seed, we talked about the volume of paint, and we talked about the number of nails way back when in the beginning of the chapter. But in this section of the chapter, you will find out how the mole and mass are related. Pause the video, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. So again, that mole is very special, and that one mole equals three things. We talked already about how that one mole equals Avogadro's number of particles, okay? Or really, one mole equals Avogadro's number of anything. One mole also equals the molar mass of a substance, and this is always grams per mole. And we can be talking about either an element or a compound. And the last thing we're going to talk about is how one mole equals 22.4 liters, but that's only for gases, and that's only at standard temperature and pressure. So these are the three conversions we're dealing with. Hmm. So let's look at something. Number one they all equal one mole. That's really going to be important when we're talking about the conversion and the one always goes with the mole. That should sound familiar. Remember when we did conversions from the metric unit to another metric unit, like centimeters to meters? We always put the one with the larger unit when we dealt with the conversion. So the same thing's going to happen here. We're always going to put the one with the mole. Other thing to look at is for two of them, we have a set number. When we're dealing with particles and when we're dealing with liters, we have a set number. However, when we're dealing with mass in grams, we're going to have to figure out that number first. We have to figure out that mass in order to use it in our conversion. So in the textbook, the textbook calls this the mole road map. In your notes is very similar, but I like to call it mole island. Just a little more fun, right? So when we go from mass island to mole island, we can do that because there's a bridge. And if we wanted to go from mass island to volume island, we won't be able to do that. Let's imagine some alligators in here and they'd kind of bite you up, right? There'd be no way to do that. We have to go from mass island to mole island to volume island. And we want to understand that mass really is grams, volume is really liters, and those particles are those four things that we talked about what those particles could be represented by. So if we look at this part of the mole island, when we're dealing with moles and particles, this should look familiar. We used the conversion of Avogadro's number equals one mole, but we went from mole to particles, this conversion setup was this way. When we went from particles to moles, we flipped the conversion around, right? Because we had to get rid of certain units to give us the unit we wanted. So this was in the previous video. This video is going to be focusing on this part of Mole Island, moles to uh, mass or grams and grams back to moles. So again, notice the conversions. The conversion setup is very, very similar, but it's flipped depending on where we're starting at and where we're ending at, what unit we want, what unit we have.
And the next video, we're going to be dealing with this part of the mole island, going from liters to moles or moles to volume. Again, I'm using different terminologies because you're going to be using and, and um, uh, finding out that different words basically mean the same thing. So here's a little trick. When we're dealing with the mole unit, we actually have to multiply by one of those magic conversions. So mole for multiplying uh, Avogadro's number, the mass, or 22.4 liters. So this is just going to be an extra check. So if I'm starting with my mole unit, I better have my conversion where my number is on the top because I want to multiply by that number. So hence, going the other way, if I'm starting at one of the other islands and I want to go to mole island, I'm going to be dividing by one of those magic numbers. Again, Avogadro's number, the mass, or the 22.4 liters. So you might want to jot this down in your margins or something. So at least it's another checkpoint to say, all right, I'm starting at mole unit, so I better be multiplying my value. So pause the video, make sure you have your ion periodic table. We're going to need that for names and formulas. Your real periodic table, because we need that for the masses. And of course, your calculator, because you're going to be doing some math. So let's look at example one. Find the mass in grams, and they don't always have to tell you what unit, but usually mass is for grams of a certain amount of moles of this substance. Okay, so my first thought is find the mass. That's going to be my question mark. That's what we need. So where am I going to start with? Well, here's my number and here's my unit. Aha, that's going to be my starting point. Now there's a little bit of an issue. Since I'm dealing with mass, I actually need to find the formula mass of my formula because they're not giving that to me. So pause the video, find carbon, find hydrogen, and do the mathematics to find the mass of that molecule. Hopefully you pause, then in the corner here, yes it is, I have 20 carbons, I have 42 H's, I added up those individual elements to get that mass. Now I can continue with the problem. So when I'm dealing with mass and mole, I need to pause and make sure that I have the mass of that substance. All right, so again, my starting point is moles. I'm going to multiply it by a conversion line. What unit am I going to put on the bottom? I better put moles down because that's what I'm canceling out. So what's going to go on top? Well, I want mass. So my gram unit is going to go on top. What number always, always, always goes with the mole conversion is the one. I'm going to put that there. So then I'm not confused and I know exactly where my mass goes. It goes on top with my gram unit. All right, so can you pause, use your magic EE button to deal with that times 10, and can you come up with an answer? Hopefully you paused and came up with an answer of 1.28 grams of that substance. All right, next. It says calculate the mass, again, in grams, and that's normal, of 2.5 moles of iron 2 hydroxide. All right, so what am I asking for? I'm asking for the mass, and what am I given? Well, here's our number and our unit, so we're starting at the mole. Now, the difference here, though, is they don't give us a formula. They're giving us the name. So pause, come up with a formula for iron 2 hydroxide, then come up with the mass, that formula mass, that molar mass of iron 2 hydroxide. Hopefully you paused, you used your periodic table, and you came up with the formula Fe, OH in parentheses with the two on the outside. So this tells us that we have one iron, two oxygens, and two hydrogens. Add them all up, and that's our molar mass. All right, so now let's start. Now let's start putting the, um, uh, the process together. So we're going to start out with that 2.50 moles of our iron 2 hydroxide. Again, we're going to multiply by a line. After we multiply by that line, we're going to put moles on the bottom because we need to cancel that unit out, and we want grams on the top. So again, let's think about this. What number always goes with mole when we're talking about our conversion? Correct the number one, and our grams is going to be the other guy. So notice here, again, it's grams per mole. We're using that molar mass as a conversion. 
Also, since I'm starting with moles, I'm going to be multiplying. Hmm, so my setup should be good. So pause the video, <clears throat> do the math in your calculator, and come up with an answer. Hopefully you came up with 224.68 grams. And again, I'm putting the substance here. It's not necessary, but it's just a reminder of what really the problem is asking. All right, now let's look at example three. Find the number of moles in 0 0.0037 grams of boron. All right, so a couple of things to think about here. Uh, find the number of moles, that's my question mark, and I'm starting with grams. If I'm starting with grams, that means I, I need the mass of my substance. And in this case, I'm asking for the, or I need to find the mass of boron. Well, boron, guys, is an element. So pause the video, find boron, and find its mass. Hopefully you found boron to be atomic number five and the mass is at 10.81. All right, now we can set up the problem. We're starting at our gram, so there's my number and gram unit. I'm going to multiply it by a conversion line. The grams goes on the bottom because I want to cancel that out and moles goes on top. So what number always goes with moles? one, and in this case, the grams is going to go on the bottom. That 10.81 goes on the bottom. So this should make sense. I am starting out in the mass unit, and so I'm going to be dividing by my uh, molar mass or my formula mass. So again, pause the video and do the math. Hopefully in your calculator, you got that as an answer. And now your answer might have been given to you as a decimal form or as the scientific notation form. Either way, I need the number and unit for your answer. All right, example number four. Calculate the number of moles in 7,517 grams of dinitrogen trioxide. All right, so I want the number of moles. That's what I want as an answer. And so I'm going to look at my number, and right next to it is grams. That's going to be my starting point. Uh-oh, I'm dealing with grams again. But they don't give me a formula. They give me the name of the compound. And so in this case, since I'm dealing with nitrogen, and it's a non-metal, it's going to be a molecular compound. I don't even need the periodic table, at least for the formula. I know that I'm going to have two nitrogens and three oxygens. So pause the video and come up with that mass. All right, so here's my mass for two nitrogens and three oxygens, 76.02. So again, my starting point, let's set up the problem, times my conversion line. I'm going to put grams on the bottom to get rid of it, moles up top. Moles always gets the one with it. So what's my gram number going to be? Well, my formula mass. So pause the video, and can you do the mathematics? Hopefully you paused and you got that as an answer. Again, number and unit. If you put the substance, that's great. That's just an addition right now. All right, guys, so hopefully that makes sense. And now you have two practice problems to do. However, I just want to bring to your attention that the three substances you're dealing with in number one is going to be the same three substances you're dealing with in number two. So once you find the masses of the three substances in one, those masses, that molar mass, those grams per mole, is going to be the same in number two. So pause the video, write out the work so you're understanding what you're getting right or wrong. So hopefully, guys, you paused the video. You did um, one. I gave you the formula, uh, but B and C, you had to come up with the formula before you can even um, do the problem, right? So one, A, B, and C, pause and make sure that your numbers are exactly what these are. And for number two, again, pause, making sure that your uh, numbers match up. So again, if we're all rounding to two decimal places, these should all be exactly the same. All right, one question quiz. Here we go. Can you pause and come up with an answer? Hopefully you did. You wrote it out and you got C as an answer. All right, guys, we will see you in class and hopefully this is starting to make sense and you can convert from one mole type of unit to another mole type of unit. And next uh, video is the uh, leaders.